so hello everyone hi uh, yeah so today i'll be talking about android data binding and uh, how we can use it to build uh, android apps faster so before diving in i like i like to ask you a few questions like how many of you like to use find view by id or either get resources uh, get drivables uh, and even enable or disable views using alpha or uh, enable view listener so even try even attach listener so how do you so how many of you like this writing this boilerplate code no not everyone yep uh, I was expecting this because even I had writing this boilerplate code uh, so the image that you see here is from the Facebook messenger app uh, what do you think how many views are here in this uh, screenshot 10 15 yeah, at least 15 yeah so how much time of a developer would go in just writing the boilerplate code to to attach these views like by calling find view by id even uh, attach the listeners and attach the text watcher for the edit text and even uh, getting the string resources i think uh, and how uh, i think it will it would be more than 30 lines of code and uh, it's, it's like it's pain when you want to change the color of the images or even set alpha and when the requirements changes uh, it's it's really a pain like go, the developer need to go back to the boilerplate code and make changes so and, it, and it's difficult to maintain in the long run so there are few libraries in the market that uh, I think we can use to to tackle this problem uh, one of these is butter knife which is used for view and resource binding uh, and it is being uh, uh, written by Square Jake Wharton is a developer who is at Square and he wrote that library so <coughs> What can we do with this button knife library? We can find the re views by calling uh, the unnotation bind view unnotation instead of calling find view by ID. We can even attach the listeners by calling on click unnotation. And it's an icing on cake. We, you can even bind the resources. You can bind the color resources, strings, or drivables. So, I'll take you through a sign-in fragment code that I wrote. It contains two edit texts uh, and uh, there are two buttons, sign-in and sign-up button. Whenever you, you enter an email and a password which has a character length of uh, greater than six, the sign-in button gets enabled and even it changes the alpha uh, of that email, of the sign-in button. So let's see how I bind this view and how I attach the re these resources, the string resources, and att attach on click listener using butter knife. So here is the code. Uh, I think it's kind of. Uh, I'll just try to minimize the image. And okay. Yep. So this is the sign in fragment that I wrote. You can see that I am just using annotations providing it the resource ID of the resources, maybe even if it's string or any view uh, or the ID to attach an on click listener. I'm just doing it using annotation. No find view by ID, no anonymous inner classes for on click listeners. This code, is, uh, this code is just readable and, uh, and easy to maintain. It's all these listeners and views are being attached on, the, uh, on a single place. So looking at this, uh, it feels nice, okay, we can, do, we can attach resources and views. But as a developer, I want something more. What if I'm, I'm able to use an expression to change the to change the alpha of an image to attach to make the views 
uh, visible or invisible depending on some preconditions and it will be really nice if I am able to attach the edit text change listener, the text watcher or even the uh, edit actions whenever I click on turn button in my keyboard. So let's talk about model view view model and how I used it to write a simple sign in app using Android data binding. So what is model view view model? It's an architectural pattern more similar to MVP that we saw previous month but they, there are subtle differences between MVP and model view view model. The views here are the XML layouts and even the activities and fragments. The views attach the commands or listeners, uh, the commands that need to be called from the view model. So the view model actually has all the listeners, the text watchers, and even edit actions. The view just knows what kind of listeners or watchers I need to, the view needs to call and the view model sends the notification on, on, on this uh, when this actions complete. The view model in turn updates the model about any data changes and the model validates this data and passes back the result to the view model. The subtle difference that we need to that, that is between MVVM and MVP is the view model contains Android framework related code which wasn't there in model view presenter. That's why it, uh, the model view presenter is kind of robust but with Android data binding model view model is being widely used. There are a lot of developers using this and you can google it and see really good examples of the apps written with it. So the screenshot here is about the sample app that I'll be showing you and I'll take you through the code. So the text, the edit text, the sign in button and the sign up button all go inside the view. All are inside the XML layouts. The edit text watchers and the click listeners for the email and password and sign in and sign up button live in the view model. I have a sign in view model for this and there is a simple uh, sign-in model which, which contains two strings, email and password. So uh, moving forward, we'll just see the example. Whenever we enter a valid email and password, it changes the color of the sign-in button. And uh, we'll just go through some code. So you are more aware of how the Android data binding works. So to enable Android data binding, uh, there are some prerequisites. You need to have Android Gradle plugin 1.5 and above. The second prerequisite is you need to go into the build of Gradle file and enable the data binding element. Uh, so after that, uh, here is the XML layout file that I've written, you'll see a few difference here. There is no root layout, linear layout uh, at the top of the XML file. But there is some, some new element for layout. This new XML uh, element is being added by the Android developers. So the compiler knows uh, this XML file will be used for data binding. So it's not the regular XML file, but it's something that's going to be used for data binding. There are two more element XML elements, XML types added. Those are data. So data tells the compiler, like, okay, there would be some data related to the binding that we'll use later in the XML file. And then there is variable. Variable is just simple. Uh, I'm naming in. Uh, I'm instantiating a sign-in view model, like, okay, I, uh, I'm telling the compiler, 
there is a sign in view model that I'll be using and I'm naming it as view model. And then comes our root element, which is a linear layout. You can see there are two edit texts and there are two buttons. For simplicity, I've added all the other uh, XML code related to layout in the uh, styles file. So you won't see any broad wrap content or any color information about the buttons. So there are two edit texts and two buttons. The edit texts are being attached the text watchers. So whenever a user types in an email and password, the uh, uh, the view gets notified about those changes. So, and you can see that there is an at, at the red symbol with two curly braces. And it contains, uh, and it contains the name of the view model followed by the, uh, followed by the method get email text watcher. This is called as an expression uh, in the new Android data binding uh, jargon. And uh, I'm also using this expression on the sign in button. So we just check if the input is valid, set the alpha to 1.0, otherwise just disable that. I'm also using this expression to enable the sign in button. So the same kind of, uh, and I'm also attaching li click listeners for both sign in and sign up button. So moving forward, now I'll show you how I'm using this XML file in the sign in fragment. So this is the sign in fragment. We are inflating the uh, the XML file that we saw in in the similar way what we used to do, what we are doing right now. But I'm also adding a single line of statement to bind this layout and set my view model. So if you see the fragment sign in DB binding class, it's being generated by the Android data binding compiler and the, the class name is, is generated by according to the file name. So my XML file has had this name, fragment underscore sign, un sign in underscore in underscore DB. And so it just stripped off the underscores and it created that class. Uh, so I'm just binding the layout to that class, telling it, okay, uh, you, you need to bind data for this view. And I'm also passing it the view model. So, so the view model variable that we declared will use the sign in view model. Uh, you can also go through the fragment sign in uh, db binding class generated by the android compiler and uh, but you need to clean and build the app if you want to see this class and uh, this class is pretty lengthy and uh, android asked us not to change anything inside this class it's like the resources uh, android resources file we don't need to change anything inside the class but it's really useful to know what uh, what kind of listeners are there and uh, what kind of methods this class provides to inflate the layouts and even bind the views. It's really helpful and you can learn a lot from this. Uh, the Does another... Do you model have to extend from anything? Hmm? Does you model have to have a base class and a base view model class? Uh, the view model, uh, no. Yep. So it can be any class and you can just provide it uh, as a variable. You can even use views, the Android built in view classes. You can use those also. So here is the sign in view model. Uh, so I have another, I have a sign in model class here with the data listener. Uh, I am creating the sign in model. Uh, uh, class in the constructor and uh, just assigning uh, these default values for email and password. Uh, 
and then we have this text watchers and uh, you if you remember we use this text watcher in our XML file by just calling view model dot get email text watcher and get password text watcher I also have this sign, uh, sign in click methods that we used in the XML file by calling view model dot on sign in click so <coughs> this sign in click methods just don't do anything but call the data listener which is implemented by the fragment and it just spits out the toast message it's, and it's similar with the sign up uh, on sign up click so in this case you had two text inputs yes so if the form was longer is there a way to make more of a dynamic watcher that it kind of says here's the value and by the way here's the field and that way you don't have to set a separate watcher for each one uh, yeah you can do that way also yeah. yes but uh, just for simplicity I had uh, yeah I just took these two watchers okay. and uh, I am calling sign in model dot set email passing it the string uh, same for the password yeah. I'm passing it the password so now we'll go to the sign in model as you can see there are only these two fields email and password but uh, the most important thing to consider is I'm extending a base observable so why am I extending base observable? Because it's just uh, email and password here. I'm extending it to tell my view that okay, I got a new email string in my set email and just check if there are any views that need to be enabled for on click or if there, is some, there are some views that need to be made visible. So that's why I need to extend the base observable class. And the method that I call to tell my view to, uh, to look for these field changes is notify change. So notify change actually notifies for any field change in my model. So even if it's email or password, all field changes are being notified. You can do it alternatively so if I, on, if I want to notify only about the e set email, uh, email chain, I will use the bind not bind bindable uh, notation and instead of notify change, I'll call notify property change and I'll just pass in what kind of property. Yeah, so uh, it's, it's an infill. But this is just an example, so I can, ma I can make it more fine grain. So, yeah. And, uh, yeah, so uh, you can, and there is also an input, is input va data valid method that we use, uh, that the sign in button, uh, that the sign in button uh, uses to enable or disable the um, the sign in button mm, with that uh, I'll try to show you how the app works through uh, and then uh, I'll also take you through some unit tests that I've written uh, I have this app working for both button knife and data binding so I'll just show you in a quick moment so Either you can launch button knife or you can launch DB for data binding. BK for button knife and DB for data binding. You can launch any app. If you launch button knife, you will see the same UI. And uh, it's only that it's using button knife, but not Android data binding. And if you go back, launch data binding, it will you will have the same UI. So I'll just try to type in my email address and password the password need to be more than six characters wow the sign in button got enabled now if if I, yeah so you you so visor is somehow i i'm not sure if it's propagating yeah so yeah so that's how it is even a small change uh, notifies the views about uh, what it needs to do 
So even if I change my email, it will it will check for invalidation. Okay, this is not an invalid email, and it will disable the sign in button. Again, it enables that. So, so it's you using on change. Uh, yes. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so notify chain. I'm using notify chain. No, for back on the the layout. Uh, uh, so I mean, to me, it looks more like a key app in HTML. Mm-hmm. Because um, in HTML, on change would be when you finish typing and, and it goes from. Oh no! So, so yeah. So what I'm doing here is for every every character type in yeah. i'm am sending it to the model for a, for every text change and and then the model tells the view uh, that the data has been changed the email or password and then it tries to either enable or disable sign in button because as soon as the password goes from 6 character length to 7 i need to enable the sign in button and if the user deletes any character from the password, and if it's, it falls below that range, I need to disable it. So to get the, that fine grain control, I'm passing in every, uh, every text change. Oh, yes. So I have an uh, is input data valid method here. Yeah. Okay. yeah. So I'm just calling is valid email, uh, passing it the character sequence. Right. How, what is this valid email? Oh yeah. So is valid email uh, email will just check if there is a if they add gmail dot com or add. So it's just right. checking. So it's built in the Android that pattern. Yeah. That's yeah. That's right. yeah. It's still in Android. So but. Oh, okay. So, yeah, so I'm using the, yeah, yeah, I know that. Uh, so basically you should buy, no, I think I'll have to ask the Android guys to change the Android utility pattern for email address matcher. But, uh, yeah, so that's how it is. Uh, uh, but, but I'm not using. Uh, I'm just using the uh, Android utility for for matching up the email address. So it's all inbuilt, and we are not doing like I'm not sending this request to some server. It's just a sample app, and uh, uh, sign in. So let's go through the uh, through the simple unit test, J unit test that I that I wrote. So first we'll go through the sign in view model test. So I'm just testing the data listener to check if the view gets called. You know, whenever there is some uh, whenever the sign in completes or the sign up completes. So I just call the data listener and verify how many times the on sign in completed for the view work gets called and how many times the on sign up click, click gets called. Uh, that's how I try to test on click. Uh, <coughs> the most interesting part right now is to test the sign in model <coughs> because uh, it extends the base observable class and we call notify change. I need to test in some way whether the view gets notified of any email or password changes. So uh, I, I just set up a property change callback. Uh, I just mock it and uh, I, I pass it to the add on property change callback which is inside the base observable class. Uh, because my sign in model uh, DB is a base observable, I pass my property change callback for it in uh, for the future references. And then uh, <coughs> I try to set up my email at test at test.com <coughs> and verify if my property change call back was called only one time and uh, uh, on on the property change sign in model db and br all 
so as I said you earlier we are using notify change so for any field uh, that changes the B uh, BR all <coughs> stands for all the fields so if if you add uh, if you add bindable like the base observable for uh, for more specific fields you will get that here in the BR class and this class is generated uh, by by the Android compile like when you build the app so you need to clean and build that app so and I do the same for the password I set the password and now I check whether it's called twice because earlier I call it for email and now it should get call for the password so it said it's being set twice so I'm just checking that and uh, yeah and that's it unfortunately it runs so I'll just try to run this simple is there a method on base observable where you can just notify a single property change yes yes and then BR class generates yes you yeah. like annotate the field or anything like that or like yeah do you have to like annotate the field let's say I have a field called like M email yes you annotate the field to like to generate NBR or uh, yes, yes. So you need to annotate it, annotate the method uh -huh. uh, for that field okay. with add bindable, and you need to add notify property chain with the ID of that property. All right. Yeah. Cool. And yeah, so this test case is run. Uh, I have this example on the GitHub, and I've also provided the link in the presentation. So if you want to try this. Uh, or uh, MV uh, try the Android data binding using model view model you are always welcome uh, we'll go through and summarize uh, our talk so with view bindings and data bindings there is less boilerplate code and it's uh, the code is more readable and more maintainable less developer time spent uh, in writing this boilerplate code uh, MVVM can also help us to separate the business logic but as I told you it's not as perfect as model view presenter so view model does contain some Android framework code which most of us don't like to be we, we, we don't want that to be in the view model uh, writing unit tests is much easier as I uh, show you, showed you two J unit tests uh, and it was much easier because there is the separation of concern and uh, also Android Studio sometimes shows valid expressions as errors and I'll, sh I'll show you the example can you see the rare expression there is a query in the Android Studio I'm using Android Studio 2.1 and Gradle build plugin 1.5 but I think there are some changes in uh, Gradle plugin 2 so hopefully if you guys use that you won't go through this problem the another uh, problem that I any question oh hmm? uh, yeah so the another problem I saw is a uh, lack of autocomplete when I'm using data binding so if there is no autocomplete uh, and if, the, if there are very used model classes or view model classes written by some other developer or your peer uh, you can get lost. You will have to go back and forth the classes and try to see the data binding. Uh, yeah, so these were some problems, and uh, I hope like uh, you all use uh, Android data binding. Yeah. And that's it from me. And I'm waiting for you. Thank you.
Yes, uh, I think that would be an issue because uh, I've seen few examples uh, where uh, people don't use MVVM but dire directly use model in view and their models for any update instead of passing it uh, passing it to through the view model directly pass it to the view so i think there may be these problems The solution is to use some kind of an architecture pattern, so you it so the view doesn't get updated from everywhere inside the code. Uh, but unfortunately, I don't think that's that's being done using Android data binding, because the views get updated from the models. So as soon as the model gets updated, uh, it passes like it notifies the views that okay there is some change. So you're saying that this is a cool tool, but like you might still need to put a little bit more thought into it. Yes. 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 And like when you run into problems, where, where, where are the solutions at? Yeah, so when, this, when I was going through this uh, Android data binding tutorial, by, uh, uh, and there is a talk, a Google I talk, I was going through the video, and uh, they were not using any view model. So they had this view with all these listeners. And whenever they, whenever they updated the user model, they had this model called user with username and email and age. So whenever they updated the user mo user model, it, uh, it, it notified the views. And all these Android listeners and text watchers went into the fragment or activity. And that's what we don't want. We want, the, we, like, we want some business logic separation and that's where the view model or presenter comes in place. Yes. But it's still, uh, like it's still very naive and there is a lot of, I think there is need of a lot of improvement. As you said, we may come up with more problems like this. Yeah. It also doesn't work well with amicable objects. Like, your objects has no centers. Um, yes. You get changes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I agree with you. So you spend time coding, coding, coding. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yes. But there are some, uh, like, it's like a, you get based on both words. I know. Every yeah. while I can see the effort, sometimes it gets, it's like, stop. I'll, I'll start tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. Could you show the butter knife version? Uh, you, 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 you in, in the app? app? Yeah, you have to use an app password with the binary. Right, yeah. I yeah. I'm just curious if it behaves differently or slow. So, going back. I launched the button knife app, so I'll type in the password. And uh, for your information, I've used MVP to write the button knife app. So in in our previous talk, there was a question whether we can use button knife and write an MVP app, and where would button knife fit uh, in this MVP pattern? So it fits into the view. Uh, yeah. So this app is being written using MVP, and. Uh, I type in the password, it's more than six characters, it enables the sign in button, it goes down, it disables that. I can click on sign up, you can see the sign up click and uh, sign in completely. It behaves the same way, both apps are same, the UI is same, the implementation is different. So you had, when you said earlier, you know, maybe it's three lines of code, if you did it yourself, I'm just curious. Uh, the the library itself? No, I haven't seen into button knife like how many lines of code it is. But uh, it basically like generates an adapter class for every single file that binds. Yeah, and it's pretty 
problems. Um, is there any class like per fine team as well? So yeah. size wise or your increase in size? Yeah. yeah. But uh, I don't think it's monolithic. It's just like because uh, they only bind views and resources. They don't do a hell lot of stuff related to uh, recycler views or list or. Uh, Uh, I I didn't face any problem with on click. Yeah, because it seems so easy. You know, I haven't really reviewed it yet, but uh, uh, you can try to try yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, but uh, we need to pass the view to the on click methods. Yeah. Uh, yes. Why can't you just use the the, the, the method of finding the length of the field? Make sure it's six because you you want the, the button to show up only if that's six, right? Uh, yes, but that. But I am also checking for the email, so if it's a valid email and not just uh, numbers or characters. But you can only check for an at sign, basically. Yeah, no, there, there was a panel. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah okay. So I want both to be valid, yeah. even so email. Yeah. yeah. Actually, let's. Do you want to test your email address real quick? Sure. Okay, so uh, were they both using that same pattern for yes, the both email? Yeah. Yeah, let's test that out. Yeah, let's get a sample. Let's let's put so some money. Yeah, 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 ye